Hey, this is Glenn. Welcome to another episode of Difficult Questions. This one, when is global warming real? So everyone loves to talk about global warming or loves to not talk about global warming or loves to ignore it or loves to say it isn't happening or loves to say we can't do anything about it or loves to say you should do something about it. But when is it real? And this is an example. For me, it was real. I used to ride a motorcycle and I was living in Las Vegas. And at night, you would ride away from downtown Las Vegas or the Strip and the temperature outside would get 10 to 15 degrees cooler as I was driving or riding away from all that concrete. So for me, I always have this knowledge that humans can affect weather and humans can affect weather to varying degrees. But I also believe that Mother Nature will balance herself. And the only living things that really lose out about global warming is people. And yes, there are animals and killing animals and polar bears not having ice anymore and, and all of that. But really, I think we, we cut our own throats. Um, but... What do you do about it? And what are you willing to give up to not have the things that create global warming? Also, our country in the U.S. or the West has had this industrialization. So we've been through polluting putting multiple things into the air. Who are we to tell other countries that haven't been through that industrialization, who still live without plumbing or consistent electricity or a, a type of living, daily living that we would in the West would consider civilized, who are we to tell those people they can't make the same mistakes just because we made them first? Who owns the planet, right? And I also think that even people that deny climate change, they know what happens, but they've got a stake in the game. So they know people that make their money manufacturing things that cause pollutants that probably affect the weather globally. Their life is their life, they're going to do what they're going to do for the people, for themselves and for the people around them. How much are they going to act for a future that they won't be around in? And people always talk about their children and leaving a better uh, planet for their children. And that sounds great. I wonder if anybody really acts on that and what kind of person would act on that. I, for example, live my life very sparingly, right? As small as I possibly can. I, I took the idea of tread lightly, which I was taught in my youth as kind of a directive. So I try to make my life as small as possible, but there are a lot of sacrifices for that. You know, I was riding just a motorcycle and just a, and then I was riding just an electric motorcycle. And then I got an accident and now I'm just taking public transit. Who is going to just take public transit? And especially in this car centric Western society, I mean, everyone likes their personalized luxury chariots to drive around. And I, I, I look at that, you know, people that are yelling at other people about the environment. And I think, well, 
okay, but you're driving a vehicle for you, a 150 pound or 250 pound person, you get in a multi thousand pound vehicle and expend the fuel to move that multi thousand pound vehicle to ultimately just move a 200 pound person. So what sacrifices are you willing to make? And I think that a lot of people really look at um, what other people should do and they don't really look at what they're doing <laughs> because their convenience is too, too important to them. It's too immediate. And I just wonder what, when, when does global warming become apparent to you and what can you do about it? And we can talk about the fires in Hawaii, or we can talk about how insurance companies are pulling out of Florida and California because basically they don't want to insure land that will be destroyed by floods and mudslides and <laughs> things that will be happening. And so what can you do about that? Not buy a house? I always say because I bought a house in the housing crisis and I see it as a scam. <laughs> I always say live in a tent and buy gold, but don't keep the gold in the tent. Well, where do you keep the gold then? Because you have to use investment for when you're unable to make now money. What are you willing to sacrifice? I actually had a a, a moment where the house I live in lost their hot water heater. So we took cold showers for a couple of days and I forgot that taking cold showers makes me angry. <laughs> it makes me, it, it, I can do it, but I, I'm not in a good mood. So what I rather do is take a spit bath. So you have sponge bath and I found that I could, and it's a lot less jarring on my body and I'm, I'm, I'm happier to take a spit bath than I am a cold shower. I don't know why. But what I found is I could I could clean myself with two cups of water. That's that's a great reminder. I mean, I'm overusing water all the time and we can fix some things. Remember the ozone and using chlorofluorocarbons. Apparently, we since we stopped using chlorofluorocarbons globally, uh, we no longer have we have healed the hole in the ozone. Apparently, that's what I last heard. So things can be done, but how, how do we influence people to change their daily living and to maybe make sacrifices, especially if they are people that are pulling themselves out of poverty? They're a country that's pulling themselves out of poverty by manufacturing the stuff that we want, the computers, the batteries, by, by recycling the garbage that we make. You know, we make plastics. We use them. We love the fact that plastics keep us from spreading viruses and or getting food poisoning. But then we have this stuff that doesn't break down so so easily. So what do we do with that? Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. So when does global warming become real to you? And ultimately, what are you going to do about it? What, what can you do about it? If anything, I always say mother nature wins. You could get eaten by a bear. You could get slammed by a hurricane you could and and mother nature is unforgiving she will write herself and we will most likely be the losers but in the meantime is this thing that we are preserving is this earth that we are preserving for the future worth our sacrifices and what are those sacrifices i'd love to hear your opinion thanks Thank you.